get Bobby V in the studio. And That's the Spencer Davis group, bring them back man. some classics here. Yeah, give me some loving. Good morning, sports fans. You're in the cheap seats. Got Bob Verderber, Scott Kirby, and Coach Andy McDonald in with us this morning. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, guys. Good morning, sir. Uh, traveled up to Springfield last night, Memorial Stadium, to uh, take on the Lanfair Lions. Give us your take on the uh, game, Coach. I know we talked a little bit off air about how well we played first half and then the kind of things just kind of went south the second half. But uh, overall, give us your outlook. Yeah, I mean, that was a game we go into um, feeling pretty confident that, that we're going to be able to compete with them. And I think we came out uh, from the start and uh, had, a, had a real strong first quarter and, and a relatively strong first half. Uh, went into halftime down by a couple scores. But still, still felt good. Still felt like we were uh, we were in a position um, that we're going to be able to compete with them and, and get back in the game and, and hopefully pull out a victory. Um, you know, we, we saw a lot of positive things. You know, offensively, you know, we had over 300 yards of offense. Uh, I think West White had over 100 yards of rushing um, as a team, over 200 yards of rushing and almost 150 yards of, of passing. So we saw a lot of good things. Um, shot ourselves in a foot a few times at some crucial points. Um, you know, jumping off sides or illegal procedure or, um, you know, maybe a, dra a drop pass here and there. I thought Austin Cruz had a, had a great game, and, and I heard you mention he had great composure and I'm so proud of, of yeah. what he's done out there and shown his leadership. Uh, yeah, I think we just, we just started to kind of wear down. You know, we were sending a lot of guys in and, um, to get some playing time and get some fresh bodies and, and to keep creating some competition out there. And, um, and I think uh, we got wore down. And... Um, Tremendous performance by a running back for them. That was a big, strong, fast kid that um, was just had a, a tremendous uh, second half for them. And uh, oh, I talked to Joe a little bit after the game about uh, that. That was a well-coached Lanfear team. You're not used to seeing that from them. Uh, you know, they you know stuck to their guns. They probably only ran three or four plays the whole game, but just kept running them. Like you said, with number 44 uh, Mitchell just pounding up the middle. Uh, you were talking to Cruz. He was uh, 13 of 23 for 147 yards passing, and I know 100 of that was probably first half. Yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And two touchdowns, and Wes White, eight carries, 116 yards, two touches. Uh, just kind of touch on those guys there. Uh, Wes White, obviously a huge game. The kids, they never put their heads down. You know, I was on the sidelines, and they come back. They're still composed. They're still playing hard, still – thinking they have you know a chance to you know win and I like to see that and said just come over pointing fingers and just you know <laughs> how do you instill that uh, attitude in those kids or is it just something that uh, you let the seniors take care of well I mean it, it's something that, that we always we talk about um, I mean this is a it's a sport just like a lot of sports that uh, you're not going to be perfect all the time you're going to have adversity and um, some tough situations to deal with and um, if you want to be successful, then you've got to be able to persevere and bounce back and keep your chin up, and, and there, there is no quit. You can't do that. Uh, if you're quitting on yourself, you're quitting on the guys on the field with you. Um, and I think our guys do a pretty good job of that, and uh, a lot of that is you know, some senior leadership also and, and setting an example out there, not just seniors, but, but we have guys at, at all levels that, um, you know, throughout practices and games will, will step up and, and lead by example uh, um, and also vocally. To, to not let the guy next to him, you know, let down, give up. Um, and that's, that's very important to us in our program. And, and probably one of the most important things is that they, uh, that they give their best effort. That's all we can ask for them on every play. You're right, Coach. I have been around the program for many years, although just up in the booth. But I've never seen a Lincoln team lay down. It's a tradition that's been passed on year to year that uh, by the time you're a senior, as you mentioned, uh, they uh, – help the coach out in the way they they tell their uh, younger uh, partners out there on the field you know you got to keep your head up you got to keep playing we're playing in the toughest league in central illinois and you know five teams went to the playoffs last year so uh even though sometimes you know it seems like you're down you got to keep going and and they do it and a lot of guys going both ways doing that yeah i mean i hope so i think i think that's why these guys play that sport they uh i think they know it's going to be a it's going to be a tough battle every week's going to be a, a fight out there and and uh you know, you can uh, just like we told them after the game. You know, if you're if you're stuck in an alley and you got to defend yourself, you know, you're you've 
you've got to yeah. keep fighting. You can't just, just lay there and yeah. get pounded. Huh? That's right. And speaking of that, over the years, and I don't know how many you have, it always seems like there's tough wrestlers on the team. It, it seems like a wrestler goes with a, a football player a lot of times. Yeah, we, we do have a few wrestlers. And um, you know, typically over the years, I remember even growing up, uh, a lot of times that the wrestlers would have a reputation of being good tacklers. Um, I, I think they're used to that close quarters battling right. uh, of moving their feet and getting in close and wrapping up. And, uh, and we do have, have some wrestlers, and, and we try to, we'd love to have every wrestler out there playing football. <laughs> There's something about a wrestler. He's, he's a tough guy. Yeah. He's a street usually, fighter. Usually so, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, Coach, uh, heading over to Southeast next Friday, uh, they beat the Canton Little Giants last night, 34-19. to 19. Uh, What kind of team does Southeast have? Kind of just look a little forward just to, you know, are they – an athletic team like Lamphere? Uh, I, I think they will be. We haven't haven't watched that that film yet. Um, we'll get a look at those them over the weekend, and um, I, th I think they're always going to have the capability of having some some dangerous athletes out there like Lamphere would, and, and they've usually got some decent size. And um, you know, I think their coach is doing a good job of the program, and, and they're staying pretty positive. And um, you know, it, it's going to be a battle again. I mean, that's what we. I think our kids, uh, if they haven't realized it, if they haven't been around the program much, they know that every week, you know, we've got to be up for it, you know, and we've got to uh, we've got to keep progressing every day in practice. We can't just, uh, you know, look forward to next Friday. You know, we've got to look forward to Monday and getting better on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Right. And it's not going to get any easier next year. Decatur no. MacArthur, Decatur Eisenhower get on board. So two tough competitors there and. Uh, Coach Schweitzer told me coming back, I can't believe it. The, the great Big 12 is going to be down to seven teams next year. I heard that. Yeah. Wow. Oh. And the Central yeah. State up, will, eight will be up to ten. Ten. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do any name changes there or just kind of leave it. <laughs> the, math, the math's never right. So how, I mean, just kind of looked for, I mean, I had a discussion with somebody the other day about this. Uh, actually, it was last night on the sidelines, a couple, your, your stat keeper. How's that going to work for next year? You, you won't, you'll have nine Conference games. Conference yeah. games, you yeah. won't have that uh, non-conference game yeah. anymore, yeah. right? The schedule will be, uh, I think probably the athletic directors like that because the schedule is going to be set Just every year. You don't uh, have to go out and find a, a non-conference game. And that's got to be tough, find a non-conference game, you know, because of the comp well, the way they're set up now. Yeah. You can probably pick up a Big 12 team, you know, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. because they're going to be scrambled for two games or oh, yeah. three games or whatever it is. But uh you know, just kind of looking forward. But, uh, Coach, thanks for stopping in. Uh, good luck next week. I know you got more football on the agenda today. And uh, sophomores are over at uh, Lanphier again. They're, they're at Lanphier, and uh, if anybody's on the way over there, the, the game is going to be played at Memorial Stadium. Um, usually we play on a, a field a few blocks away. So uh, well, They don't let you have the up. good stuff. Huh? They probably uh, well, this year they are, though. They're we're we're, we're getting to play on the game field of last yeah. night, which we typically don't with the, the lower levels of sophomore freshmen. So. I was surprised the wood shape the field was in last night. Usually it's pretty torn up. but It was very good. Yeah, it was real yeah. thick grass. It looked nice. Yeah. Um, it was actually the grass was taller and thicker than I um, expected. You know, with the, the speed level playing over there, I thought they would have cut it shorter just to yeah. get a little more advantage. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the best shape I've ever seen it in. Yeah, it looked nice. Yeah. Well, Coach, thanks. Uh, I know you got to get over to Springfield. Then you got to get over to Chatham for a little JFL That's game right. for That's your right. son. A lot so, of football this weekend. Wow, you know, it, it is football. Football is in full swing. So, Coach, uh, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next Saturday. Thanks for having me. Right. Appreciate it, guys. All right, we'll take another, another uh, commercial break. So stay tuned. You're in the cheap seats, 96.3 WLC. He's on it. Yeah, rock and roll. That's an easy one. Oh, yeah. 1969. Even got the date, man. <laughs> so we've had Jimi Hendrix, the Spencer Daver Davis Group, and Led Zeppelin. Man, he's just got a, a wide variety on that library of music on that laptop. <laughs> Welcome back. You're in the cheap seat. Scott Kirby, Bob Verderber at uh, Lincoln Christian Village. And uh, you just heard the commercial from uh, Johnson Real Estate. We'd like to welcome the real estate agent and broker, Pat White, of Johnson Real Estate, as a new sponsor to the show. Uh, when it comes to buying and selling residential, commercial, rural, and farm properties, Pat White will provide you over 30 years of professional service. Uh, phone 217-737-622 or go online to jrehomes.net. Uh, talking a little football here, Central State 8. Uh, Lincoln loses to Lanfair last night. Another big game, probably the game of the week. 
SHG Rochester. We're listening to my old partner Sam Adonian when we're rolling out. We're catching him on uh, 1450 and uh, he was in shock. He couldn't believe it that uh, they were going to lose. It was in the final few minutes there. It was 38-33 uh, uh, the final Rochester over SHG. SHG and as you said one of you, the guys you work with thought it was going to be a blowout in favor of SHG but uh, Rochester jumped off to a 21-0 lead over uh, SHG, and they were able to hang on. And as you said, it's the, the family battle there, uh, Ken and Derek. Ken, uh, the longtime uh, fabled coach at SHG, and then um, Derek, the head coach at Rochester. He's got three state championship uh, wins at, uh, at the 4A level. He would have had four on a quarterback sneak. If uh, that young man gets any plays at Purdue now, they would have had four state championships now in, in I guess, four years with uh, Derek uh, Leonard at the helm over there at Rochester. I was trying. I should have bought a paper this morning. I uh, didn't, so we'll see yeah. if we can. Sometimes you can find this stuff Some online. The newspapers are getting kind of stingy with putting stuff on the web because they <laughs> obviously want you to buy their paper. Pretty much but all uh, they've got there is the final score. Yeah. Uh, game going on today, Central State 8, Taylorville, Springfield. Uh, it's a little Saturday afternoon game, and uh, let's see. Springfield, uh, they should be able to win that one against Taylorville, but uh, I believe Taylorville was victorious in their first game of the year. Uh, I yes. could be wrong, but... I'm wrong. <laughs> I knew. I knew Jim it. As, I knew it wrong. as soon as I said it. Well, you know, Taylorville moving on next year. They're going to come out of the Central State Eight, going over to the Apollo. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they're going over there, and uh, two Decatur schools coming in. Uh, yeah, they don't give you. Yeah, Mc, uh, Eisenhower and uh, and uh, MacArthur, MacArthur, of course. Yeah, I I can never figure out why they didn't keep the 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 uh, name the Running Reds of Stephen Decatur. I mean, a legendary program, but. <laughs> Uh, General MacArthur and General Eisenhower got the nod over an admiral. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's a junior high now, uh, uh, the uh, Stephen Decatur. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate Don Steiner. She was the uh, winner of the trivia that uh, you threw out there, and the answer was Kurt Courtright. Kurt Courtright. Uh, I saw him uh, this year. Um, he's still a good athlete. You see him running on the streets of Lincoln. I saw him one day. I swore he wore a, uh, ran a marathon in one day. He was up and down <laughs> every highway and every street in Lincoln, and he worked with the street and alley department also, so I was able to see him all throughout the summer. Great guy. Uh, uh, he was one of the unique running backs for Lincoln, and I don't. He probably ran for over a thousand yards in his career. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, he's a three-sport athlete. Like yes. you said, uh, heck of a running back, uh, point guard for basketball team, and a shortstop for the baseball team. Yeah, went we need on more guys play, like that. Yeah, went on to play for uh, is that Missouri State now? It used to be Southwest I, I Missouri think right. or something like that. Yeah, played down there, and uh, I think he yeah. went over and played a little. Uh, independent baseball up in new york for a little bit uh yeah. so but now yeah. he's a uh coach at the high school and uh yeah. that'd be a big uh it's yeah. a big big his, hire there his look sort of reminds me of my son he's got the california look he goes with the long hair and the beard you don't see too many guys doing that in lincoln but uh it's cool if you can pull it off yeah i, I can't but he yeah. can <laughs> yeah maybe 25 <laughs> years ago i could have but uh yeah he's still got well you're that. not that old no I'm, I'm getting there. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, well, we got about eight minutes left, uh, Bob. And I don't know if do you get into fantasy football at all. No, I don't. Not okay. a fantasy football. Well, guy. Uh, WLCN is uh, we're hosting a fantasy football league this year, uh, and sponsored by uh, Logan Lane's uh, Family Fun Center, Jake's Furnishings, and P&M Communications. Uh, had our draft last week, and we're firing it up this week. Uh, a lot of games going on. Let's see, uh, get a little schedule here. We'll give you a who's playing who. And uh, I was going to have a uh, top five to play today in each position, but uh, we had a lot to talk about. So we'll get really fired up on fantasy football next week. Uh, some of the games going on today, Teams ta uh, Team Taylor's dad is playing Foosball Fanatics. TDs and Beer, uh, they're playing Barry's Boy. Team Bays uh, playing Bear Down. Team Schmidt against Team Parrot, Butta's Cuts against Boston Tebow Party, and Team Kirby, <laughs> which no, that is not me, so I cannot participate against Team Molly. Uh, some of these names here, I mean, people have a good imagination when they're thinking up their uh, team name. Yeah. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm not so so good, but... Uh, 
Well, if you would, Scott, would you explain the, how the scoring goes? You, you pick your players, and then how do you get points uh, for their performance? Okay, well, we all met last week at the Boyne Alley, and uh, you pick your team. And each week you start a quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a kicker, and a whole defense. And you get points for yardage, touchdowns, uh, completions, receptions, rushes, you know, just about anything. Defense, you get points for sacks, uh, interceptions, fumbles recovered. And you, you, know, you just tally up the points. And uh, Thursday night, if uh, if you had Peyton Manning on your team, you had a good week already. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Team Molly, she had Peyton Manning and Julius Thomas. And both of them just had huge nights. She's got 100 points already between, like, two two guys. So she's looking pretty good uh, for the week, and uh, it's just, and then you you have a head-to-head matchup each week, and at the end of the year, the person who wins the Super Bowl is going to have a choice between a recliner from Jake's and a flat-screen TV from P&M Communications. So she picked those two players in a draft. Now, how how do you pick the draft order? Do you like draw numbers? We draw out of a hat? numbers out of a hat. We set up a draft board, and we just do a snake draft. You know, up and down, up and down. Uh, they got 12 picks. So they'll have to manage their roster all year, you know, with bye weeks and injuries and stuff like that. I was just thinking that you're going to have to worry about injuries yeah, throughout the season. Yeah. And if you really have to stay on top of it. And if you don't, you'll, you'll drop to the bottom and you won't be in contention anymore. Uh, each week we'll have a weekly point winner, highest points for that week. where They're going to win a pizza, which that will start next week. Uh, obviously there's no games, you know, the games aren't final yet this week. And, uh, you know, it's last 17 weeks, and it's a blast. Once you do it once, you're in it for life. I've been doing it since 1991. Okay. Went to Western Illinois, and uh, a bunch of the, you know, I was friends with a bunch of kids from Chicago. Mm-hmm. They kind of introduced me to it. And back then, you had to go buy a paper every right. every Monday yeah. and every Tuesday because we didn't have the Internet. Mm-hmm. Now it's it just instant. All, now it's just you don't have to do anything. You draft the team, and <laughs> you it, just... It's there. Just watch. So, so who do you cheer for in the, in the NFL? I'm a Bears fan. So am I. That's yeah, good. So, well, yeah. yeah that would be a good one tomorrow. Uh, Bears oh, yeah. taking on the Bengals. Bengals, one of the top five defenses in the league. Uh, Geno Atkins, one of the best mm-hmm. defensive ends in the game. Uh, we got two rookies starting on the right side, so I'm kind of interested to see you know, how, how they, they do. do. Yeah. I mean, the Bears, that's a tradition, but Sayers, you know, uh, sweetness, all of them. It's fun yeah. watching them, but uh, you live and die with them. You do. Uh, some days are frustrating. Sundays yeah. I get all worked up. You know, yeah. I'm up at 7 o'clock in the morning watching fantasy football sites and mm-hmm. game time, and then it's either going to be a good rest of the day or don't talk to me. <laughs> That's right. You know, back in the day, you'd watch Butkus play, and then you'd go out in the yard, and, and you'd beat each other up. It was like watching Michael Jordan. You'd go outside and play basketball when she got s- done seeing him. Yeah. In the Butkus days, you had to go out in the mud and the snow and, and play football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if there was no blood, there was no foul. And, yeah, it's, right. <laughs> you can't do that these days. If you tackle a guy wrong, you're getting fined $25,000 or ejected. It's just... Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. I you, mean, the the you can see it, the... The players are just bigger and faster these days, and there's a lot of... Uh, so now, Scott, do you think there'll be more knee injuries with the... You know, that's that's another concern that they have. People aren't hitting high anymore, so they're going low. Yeah. And it's already happened a couple of times this year. Uh, I'm trying to think who it was on. It might have been a Minnesota Vikings defensive yeah. lineman where, you know, they took him out by the knees, and yeah. it could be, and that's something yeah. that they'll have to address. Now... You ask people, would you rather get hit in the knees or the head? They're going to say head. Yeah. Quicker recovery time. And yeah. But we'll see. I mean, <laughs> they've got some big decisions to make. Before you know it, they'll have flags on. It'll be a little flag right. football. Right. Or maybe or they should go back touch. like we used to play sandlot. You don't have helmets, so you... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you're not... You're, yeah, you're not leading with your head. Yeah. So that, that's another thing. I, <laughs> I don't ever see that happening, but, yeah, that's that's a good thought. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of rules in football, and it's just, I don't know. Yeah. You want the players to be safe, but at the same time, you don't want it to take away from the game. You know, Scott, that reminds me of my other crazy theory in football. Lincoln High should go Logan County football. That way you get all the tough farm kids. You do. You get those boys from Hartsburg over here. Yeah, Mount Pulaski, Elkhart. But I don't know how you'd work that. Uh, You know, uh, you have, uh, you work combos in grade schools around here, but I don't know if the IHSA would let you do that. 
Well, it just gives there, us more there, numbers. There's a lot of consolidating going on. I know we're back where I'm from, Bushnell. They've consolidated with Avon and you know little towns around there, be just yeah. because financial reasons. But uh, coach, I've coached JFL for like ten years, and we had some kids from Hartsburg, some big kids. Mm-hmm. Well, they played you know all the way since they were in second grade, all the way through eighth grade. Now they can't play anymore because, right. you know, and that would be great if we get some of those kids over here because Lincoln's numbers in football, you know, are hurting. And yeah. the more kids we have out, the better chances and the better opportunities they're going to have. I don't know mm-hmm. if that's something that can be discussed in the future. Maybe we just brought the topic up. So And we'll I, see. D- I don't think the kids from Mount Pulaski go to Warrensburg anymore. No. I don't think they play football. They, so. Didn't they used to have a football team? years ago I, they may have long long time ago and i know for a while they probably went to warrensburg but uh you know it, like you know there's a lot of big strong yeah. kids out of those farm communities that don't get that chance absolutely yeah that would be awesome so if anybody out there is listening let's uh let's get that petition going let's get these kids over here and yeah you know they're handling bells of hay you know hunt, Oh, yeah. You know, 100 bells a day stacking that stuff up. You know they're strong. I coached for many, many years in, in uh, all the uh, the baseball and softball leagues. And I remember one time before a softball game, uh, I was coaching the girls' team, and I said, uh, what are you guys doing? All the city girls go, well, I went shopping at the mall, or I did this, or I did that. And I asked this one girl that uh, was a girl that worked on the farm. She says, well, I've been mowing grass all day. <laughs> and that's the kind of kids we need with that's that great right. work ethic. That's right. Well, uh, Bob, uh, our time's come to an end. I tell you, that hour flew by. Well, know? we had two great guests. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we could have kept on Julie the whole way. Yeah, she uh, she's a great interview, and I'm yeah. sure we'll have her back. Julie King, Director of Independent Living Sur- Sources. Thanks for coming in. Uh, Coach Andy McDonald, uh, thanks as well. And uh, thanks for setting in with me today, Bob. Well, thanks for having me. Pleasure, and I'm sure we'll do it again down the road. Uh, Next week, we'll be at Jake's Furnishings, uh, located at 1100 Woodlawn Road. So Jake, the furniture guy, Johnson, will be back in in the house. I haven't seen him for a while. Don't know what he's been doing. So tune in next week. Uh, This is the Cheap Seats, 96.3 WLCNOnline.com.